Wonderful. Well, uh, this morning we're here to learn about um, hiking the National Scenic Trails. Long distance hiker Arlette Lawn of uh, Lowell uh, recently became the first woman and sixth person ever to traverse all of our country's National Scenic Trails, a 17,830 mile feat for nearly two decades to complete. Uh, Arlette will present highlights of her adventures from all 11 trails, and Arlette uh, received um, national attention, national reporting <laughs> uh, for, for her uh, tremendous feat, uh, including uh, locally uh, in the Lowell Sun uh, several months ago. Um, and I linked uh, to that story in the original uh, description. Uh, and uh, something I neglected to do earlier, I want to thank the friends of the Tewksbury Public Library for sponsoring this event. All right, so all 120 of us or so, let's give a big virtual round of applause to Arlette for joining us here this morning. And Arlette, you can take it away. Thanks so much. All right, well, thanks for having me. Um, way for making me nervous, having so many people listen in <laughs> uh, for my first you know, virtual presentation. Uh, anyway, so I will... Obviously, my name is Arlette, and my trail name is Apple Pie, and uh, we'll come back to that later. I'll explain later. Um, I'm 50 years old. I am. I was born in the Netherlands, so you might you might see hear some accent sometimes with certain numbers, especially the THR numbers, and uh, three. Um, so in July, I finished hiking all 11 National Scenic Trails, and like you said, I'll be, I'll be talking about, about the trails, and uh, as you can see on this uh, um, slide, there are a lot of different lengths of them, and uh, the shortest one is the New England Trail, about 200 miles, and the longest one is the North Country Trail, which is about, it depends who you talk to, 4,600, 4,800 miles. It actually goes all the way to Vermont now, so they extended it. Um, so it's a lot of miles, a lot of trails. So I'm going to focus on the highlights and differences between the trails. I can't show everything, but I'll show on, on what, is, what, is, what makes those trails unique and, and then my experiences on, on the specific trails and what I learned along the way. And um, so that will be the focus for, um, for this um, presentation. Um, so here, here they all are um, all over the country. And uh, these are all the finishing photos with the years and I'll repeat those again. It's just kind of a fun little, some, some of the trails are more established and have actual like finish signs and on the mountaintop and some of them are just in the middle of nowhere and I made my own finish signs on a cardboard pizza box that a friend might have brought in, um, which kind of, you know, illustrates the differences of, of how established a trail is and such. So how did, how did I get started is, is a question that a lot of people like to know. Um, coming from Holland where we actually don't have a lot of we don't have any mountains really we have some hills really flat but I, I didn't hike much but we always biked so I was active um, and uh, we you we would go on on trips and vacations and be outdoors which I really enjoyed so you know you see me there with my chocolate and and my rubber boots out and camping with the family so I always like being outside um, but didn't start hiking, backpacking until I was uh, 18 years old and I went to Switzerland um, with my, my boyfriend at the time who would go to Switzerland all the time and introduce me to day hiking. And um, I was like, well, wouldn't it be fun instead of day hiking to go over the pass and keep going, you know, and, and explore further instead of doing the same thing out and back. So then I got into backpacking and, uh, and really enjoyed that. And then um, after college, I moved with him to California and I got introduced to Sierra Nevada and I was like, wow, this is really pretty. So I started to do more backpacking over there and uh, got a little bit more experienced. And then I hit 30 years old and everybody around me was having kids. And I was like, well, but maybe I can get this last big adventure in. 
And uh, this last big adventure, I'd found this flyer about the Pacific Crest Trail. And I was like, that sounds really cool. So as a practice, I was like, I heard about this John Muir Trail, which was only like 200 miles. So I was like, well, if I like that, um, I say only, but at that point I was like, oh my God, 200 miles. Uh, I thought if I like that, then maybe I like this Pacific Crest Trail. So that was like a practice hike. And, and right before that practice hike, I actually took my mother, which is this picture over here. I took my mother out on just a couple of days in Yosemite. And you can tell I, I didn't know anything about ultra lightweight backpacking, which is now also, you know, in, in, in fashion. Uh, I have the giant backpack. There is a bear canister in there. You know, I had the big boots, which is also something that changed. So over, over the slides, you'll see gear changes as well. So kind of look at that if you're interested in that. Um, so, so this was like the first summer that was 2002 when I started to really get into doing longer distances and exploring gear and, and all of that. So took my mom out and then when my mom left, I started the John Muir Trail, loved it. Um, and was like, yes, I, I want to do the specific crest trail. Um, and then in the corner, I don't know if I'm blocking it or not, but uh, there's a photo of me holding the apple pie. So that, that refers to my trail name, um, apple pie. So it's actually Dutch apple pie. And uh, I obviously love desserts and all of that and the good stuff in life. And it kind of is a link to my mom because it's my mom who uh who makes that apple pie so that's that's kind of where the name comes from it's not a really deep story to it but um so the first one mexico to canada on the pacific crest trail it's two it's 2600 miles approximately starting late april and uh finishing october um took me over five months which is kind of average i mean was kind of average at the time uh i think a lot of people now try to go do bigger miles and all of that stuff but um that's it's it's an average time uh, i've gone back to that trail and done mexico do the 12 new meadows um and and enjoyed it again um so what was interesting about the pacific crest trail was my first time really hiking in the desert for a long long time there is water caches, dry stretches. You have to do long days uh, because there's not a lot of water on the trail sometimes. So you got to start out with like 20 mile days or carry a lot of water. So that was something that was really hard for me. It was very challenging. I knew it was going to be hard um, ahead of time, which was good because at least my expectations were on point at that point. And um, uh, yeah, water caches. This one was, I think, pretty empty, actually. And I was, I started out with a friend. It was kind of a strategy of mine. If I'm kind of intimidated by a hike or something scary, I'm like, well, maybe I can find a friend to go with for the first little bit. And then, then it's less scary to have that, you know, company and support. So my friend hiked with me for a bit. And then I was off on my own, uh, but there was plenty of people on the trail um, to not feel lonely and and have some company with. So that was really wonderful. Uh, so the first about 700 miles is like deserty, um, wide open, um, snakes, all that good stuff. And then you hit the Sierra Nevada and um, it was gorgeous. Uh, a little bit of snow, but not a terrible snow year. So it was all fine. And then I actually, my mom who I had introduced to that backpacking the year before, uh, she came out to hike with me for a little bit so that was amazing and you can see the backpack and and uh i've gone with the lightweight backpack versus the one that i had on the year before but um it that was the uh go like gust i think it is and no support whatsoever um it was the lightweight backpack for a lot of people that year and uh, I have those uh, cotton cloths on me in that photo because of the mosquitoes, because I don't like DEET and it was a hellish, uh, you know, summer with mosquitoes in, in July. So that was an interesting outfit. Um, and, uh, but I made it through with sanity intact. Uh, I discovered uh, the um, fall collars in, in Washington, which was beautiful. 
uh, the tread with the lava, like they did so much work on that in Northern Oregon. And then it did start snowing. So with so these longer hikes, you have to be careful that you hit the weather, the weather window uh, right on time. And if you're a little too slow, uh, you might hit snow and you might not make it. I got lucky. I got out right before the big snow hit. And I think the people that were just maybe a week behind me, they, they had to walk around and, and some of them didn't make it to the border. So that's a challenge. The challenge for this trail was blisters in the desert because my feet were swelling up. So I learned that I needed to size up my shoes a bit and, uh, and, and then, you know, keep pushing miles so you make it in time to get to the border. So these are some images um, from the desert. Sierra Nevada, this was from my repeat section in 07. Then Mount Hood. So, so here I have, you know, the, this is before cell phones and I had just a tripod with my actual film camera that I had to set the timer on and it kind of looks like a fake shot. Um, but that's a whole different different uh, development with the uh, the technology. Um, so then the next year, uh, so so what happened on the PCTs? I obviously I loved it, and I really uh, kind of like rediscovered myself. Like, what is it that I like? What is it that I want out of life? And then going back after that hike, it was like I want to keep going I want to keep doing this so um I I did um so I started the CDT and uh um so that one is about 2800 miles uh, and uh, same thing with the weather window you can't start too late uh, but then you start earlier there's snow up north we did a southbound I um hiked I started with three other people and then had uh, I ended up finishing with one of those um, one of those people. Um, and so we started in the snow, um, but it's spring snow, so it's not as as scary. It doesn't you can bring the right gear to get through there. Uh, another thing that the CDT really um, taught me is that uh, to pay attention to your navigation, like it wasn't as established as the as the PCT was. Uh, sometimes there might be signs, but there might not be signs that say CDT on them, whereas the PCT was well marked. Um, and at some point, the second picture up there in the middle on top, uh, it, we got lost. Like we didn't really pay attention too much. There was a sign that says Continental Divide. So we're like, all right, we're, we're on the Continental Divide trail. We're gonna go, we're gonna go follow the Continental Divide. So even though the number of the trail that was on the sign didn't match up with the number that we had on the map. And even though uh, it really didn't look well trodden at all, although a lot of the CDT doesn't, but it could have tipped us off. Um, and uh, we all we kept going and and I got to the divide and there was my one of my buddies was there we looked at each other and we're like there was a few things that didn't match up with the maps and we're like we are on the Continental divide but we're not on the CDT are we and we're like now we're not so then we're trying to figure out what we're going to do we're going to backtrack to three miles or are we going to keep going and and we looked at our paper Delorean maps that represent like one inch is like four miles. And so they're really not that good for foot traffic navigation. Uh, but we found these forest service trails and we're like, mm, OK, well, we'll try this. And maybe not the brightest idea. And we learned a lot. But the first trail was OK. The second trail had a little sign that had fallen off the tree and it said trail not maintained. and. Uh, we're just uh, while trying to find trail, we we're following deer trails and remnants of trails. And uh, eventually uh, we ended up in some swamp with rotten logs. And we're like, oh no, we're never gonna get back to the trail. At this point, I start to panic a little bit. I was okay before that, but we, we learned our lesson. We did find the trail and we're like, okay, we should pay more attention we should be more aware of where we're going and and if something doesn't feel right 
it's probably not right. We probably would, should do a double check with our little little you know um, GPSs and uh, and and pay attention and uh, and act on that. So that was a good lesson to learn that we had I hadn't had to deal with on the PCT at all. Uh, and it made it made that trail um, the CDT way more adventurous and um, and there was also really not a lot of people on it. Um, so so that was neat and different about that trail and we slept out a lot you can see on the bottom photo there uh i again have a different backpack um it didn't fit me terribly well and uh um, it also didn't fit all of my food um i had gotten sick and i didn't want to eat all the food that i had been carrying so now i'm trying to try some different things. So a, a full loaf of bread on the back of your backpack, um, tin can that, that might be a pot because I wasn't cooking, but then I switched to cooking, but I didn't have a pot. So sometimes you just come up with things and uh, you look like you don't know what you're doing because maybe you don't. Um, anyway, so then we're going up down to, uh, this is a southbound hike. So going down to the Wind River Range and it's amazing scenery. Uh, this one with the weather window, we kind of didn't quite make it, hit, hit Colorado um, with snow, um, and there's an established uh, shortcut route uh, where you can get out of the mountains and, and just head to lower terrain a little bit quicker. Um, I went back in, I think, 2018 and did that section of the Colorado Trail um, in summertime, so I have hiked that just not during the through hike because we just got we just got um, snowed in it just was it was too slow and we didn't have snowshoes and all of that um, then we hit New Mexico and it is just amazing really I had no idea what New Mexico was going to be like and I loved it um, so of course then I've done the big two and uh, back then the whole triple crown thing wasn't as big of a deal or I didn't really even know about any of these trails when I did the PCT, I only knew about the PCT. So, uh, but on the PCT, I heard all these people talk about the AET. They had done the AET and it kind of didn't really sound that exciting to me. They were talking about trees and rough terrain and, and uh, but, then I was like, well, I've done the other two. I might as well do the AT and see what it's like and how hard it really is. And so I, I did the, um, the Appalachian Trail in 2005. And as you can tell from this slide, I've been on the uh, Northern Terminus several times. We even, I even did uh, a partial southbound, winter southbound, uh, starting in December in Maine a couple years ago and went all the way to the New Jersey border. Um, so I've been back on that trail several times. So I'll show you what the AT is like. Uh, I discovered uh, bog boards, soggy bog boards. They're really slippery, uh, fire towers, because uh, I would always climb the fire towers because there's not always a lot of views in the trees. So then you climb the tower and you might actually have a view. So very, very different from the first two where there was always views. Uh, very rocky and rooty trails. Uh, also very different from the Pacific Crest Trail where the trail usually was pretty smooth. Uh, rocky, rooty trails. I had a hard time with it. It was it was um, challenging. And, uh, um, and then at the end, I saw Katahdin about once, which is the bottom picture there. And that was the last and the first time I actually saw Katahdin on my through hike. So when I finished, uh, I was like, what is, what is this, this, this Katahdin? But luckily, like in the other slide earlier on, I have been able to get back and actually see how beautiful it is. So this is uh, Mount Muslak in the White Mountains on a uh, section hike. So section hiking is actually really quite neat uh, because you can pick your times on where you can, when you go to a certain area, you can pick the season, you can, you know, 
uh, pick a good day and and just have have a better uh, view maybe versus on a through hike you're just there when you're there you don't really have that choice too much unless it's like miserable and you're like well I'm gonna stay in town for a day and wait it out um, but that's kind of a contrast with section hiking and through hiking that with section hiking got a little bit more freedom sometimes or you know you can just pick a better season this is also uh, this was a, a shorter hike in, in the presidential range, whereas like on my through hike, I had clouds and I had some views in the presidential spot, not as splendid as this one. And this one is also in the presidentials and it's in winter time. Uh, and just going back in different seasons makes a trail interesting because it just looks different. Um, which I'm fortunate enough to go back to the whites a lot. And, um, and this was from the winter hike. Uh, and that's a really good view of Katahdin that I hadn't had on my through hike. And sometimes you just hit trail conditions that are just, just plain awful on a section hike <laughs> instead of better. And this was actually the trail on the winter section hike. And uh, at that point, <laughs> we decided that that those conditions were not conducive to keep hiking and, and we found a lower route. So I had by that time done the three big ones. And and I'd gone back to work for a little bit and I tried to figure out what to do with my life and through hiking was just one thing that made me really happy. So I was like, what, what other trails are out there that, that sound interesting? And I discovered the Pacific Northwest Trail. I thought it would challenge me. I could prove to myself that I could do something challenging like the CDT by myself and and um so it's a little bit of, a, of an ego challenge sometimes it's nice to be able to to push yourself and 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 discover things about yourself like can i can i do this uh and that makes a hike sometimes more interesting and obviously the scenery sounded amazing you start at glacier national park and you go all the way to the olympic national park um and uh, uh so, so that hike was out to challenge myself to enjoy nature and to kind of get out of that depression that I'd fallen into after the big three. Uh, I did half of it in 07. There was nobody out there. I had no other people hiking with me. It truly was a, a solo adventure. Uh, these were just some random people that had taken my photo uh, of me. Uh, the trail actually goes down around the lake, this is in Glacier, and I had some moments going down the snow slope where I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't be doing this by myself, this might not be the brightest idea, but you know, I made it down safely, I had enough experience to not be like a total idiot, and, uh, and I made it down and continued on, but halfway through, um, lost a little bit of motivation and I had met a boy who called me and asked me to come home to him and so I quit and uh, in 2012 I went back and did another section this is in Mount Baker area and then in 2019 me and that same boy finished and did it as a shorter section that, that I had left. And again, with the section hiking part, I had some extra time to explore. And so we went off trail actually and explored Blue Glacier in the Olympic National Park, which is another thing like section hiking, you got a little bit more flexibility sometimes to, to go off and explore more things. And what stands out on the Pacific Northwest Trail is the coastal section is just amazing, so different. Uh, in 2009, we were looking for something to do in kind of winter time. And so there's the Arizona Trail. So that fit the schedule. It wasn't, I wasn't actively trying to do all the National Scenic Trails. I didn't even really know what they were. 
uh, it wasn't a thing back then. Uh, but this fit my schedule. It sounded like a cool trail. And here we go, Arizona Trail. Gorgeous scenery, very different, open grasslands. It was hot too, uh, kind of a little bit like with the PCT where you have to really watch your water. But the scenery was amazing. Again, a different backpack. You try to different try to find backpacks that work and fit and aren't too heavy and, and don't kill your back. Uh, AZT still had some sections that were not finished yet and also had sections that had burned and not maintained. And uh, so we bought some pajama pants because we got scratched up with all the thorny bits and pieces in, in the shrubbery and, and so hence this wonderful outfit. Uh, it goes through the Grand Canyon, which is beautiful, and uh, it was a really wonderful trail. So then again, another winter, trying to find something to do in the winter time, which is our off season. And well, there's the Florida Trail. Florida Trail sounds intriguing, but also sounds a little bit miserable. But well, it was good. It fit in our schedule, so we did the Florida Trail which has the word, the, the, the monument is like really way, way down, not great planning, hence the weird photo. Uh, it has swamp walking, it has big cypress, it has more swamp, but it also has palm trees and Spanish moss in the oaks and white sandy beaches. The challenging thing about the Florida Trail, this was our first trail that we had to do a lot of road walking. And that took me by surprise. It's really, really hard on the body. And um, I actually got injured on this one uh, because probably overuse and um, uh, just the hard pavement is very challenging because it's always the same movement since it's flat it's a hard impact and i had not anticipated that i thought it would be like easy like it's flat it'll be fast uh and that totally took me by surprise and and i actually had to get off halfway because my foot was just hurting too much so that was the only trail that i had like physical injuries that i had to get off and um and then we came back several years later and finished it up and I had better footwear, a little bit more cushioning, sandals, you know, try to switch your gear around so that you, you learn, you learn from these things. Also, another challenge that we found with trails like this that are more urban is you can't just camp anywhere. You have to plan. You have to plan where you're going, where you're camping, you, you or you end up in somebody's backyard, and and then that's not uh, you know a good idea unless they're nice and you can ask them, hey, can we camp in your backyard? But who does that? Uh, anyway, so that was a, a a different a different. It was a learning experience too. Like not every national scenic trail actually is all the time super scenic. Sometimes there's bike paths and dike walks that are just the same for days and days and 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 not wilderness necessarily so uh then we discovered it was like a little new england trail and now i'm kind of listening i'm kind of learning about there there's national scenic trails and uh and i have some buddies that are working on them and 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 and, national, and the New England Trail was one of the National Scenic Trails and it was right in our backyard. And we always said, oh, that sounds kind of interesting. Maybe we should do that sometime, but definitely not in the summer because the summer in Massachusetts, New England, it's gonna be really buggy and hot and yucky. And so we ended up doing it in August. That makes a lot of sense. So uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it in August. It's an okay little trail. It's, it's uh, also kind of challenging with camping because it is quite urban uh but it's it's not long um just don't do it in august that was dumb start at the atlantic ocean go through connecticut and massachusetts have some nice views there are some nice ridge walks there also i always joke there's also some gun ranges right there <laughs> which was kind of a weird experience um some views uh, so by now we're really, you know, we're getting into this, this through hiker life. We really enjoy it. You get to go shopping with your 
backpack in a shopping cart, people stare at you because you smell and you look weird and you have a big backpack in your shopping cart. You take showers, you know, at uh, boot cleaning, horse cleaning stations. You might sleep in a restroom when it's cold and winter, but, you know, the restrooms are heated. So that makes more sense than sleeping outside. It's classy, you know, you might write some poetry in a pit toilet like my friend over there you might find random cokes and drinks and snacks in a random cooler in the woods and uh you may drink some water out of a really nasty looking cow trough you linger loiter in the dollar general or outside of the dollar general people might actually hand you money in the dollar general it's a very interesting experience you might start eating raw uncooked ramen with honey on it just to get some extra calories uh, it's a pretty fancy lifestyle. I highly recommend it. So there's a lot of trails uh, besides the National Scenic Trails. I actually won't go into this, but there is some other trails on here that I've also hiked. Just, you know, just, you know, there's a lot of stuff to do in this country. Uh, so one of those trails that was on the map that wasn't a National Scenic Trail was the Pinhoti Trail. And I am... Uh, meet this wonderful gentleman called Nimble Will Nomad. I think it's 2018. And he's telling me, you could be the first woman to do all the 11 National Scenic Trails. And I was like, huh. He's like, yeah, you've already done so many of them. I'm like, yeah, I have, but there's like four left. And one of them is about 4,700 miles. And that's a really long hike. Do I really want to do that? And but I thought at the time I didn't, or maybe I did, but then there's a seed that's planted in your brain. You're like, well, it would be kind of cool to do all the national 11 national scenic trails, and it'd be kind of cool to be the first woman. And there's only been so few men that have actually hiked them all. And and even though some of them don't sound so exciting, like the North Country Trail, which is the 4,700 miles or however many, and and and, and it does have Ohio in it, which I've heard is not that fun to hike. Um, but it would be kind of cool. Hmm. So I started thinking about it and I started thinking about it. And when I start thinking about trails and hikes and adventures, I usually am hooked and start planning them. So I uh, wrote down which ones I had left and a friend of mine, his name is Buck 30. He was planning a bunch of them. He was going to finish them. So we're kind of exchanging information. And uh, uh, this one, I actually pulled out all the maps and, and you kind of have to make it up as you go. Some of these trails aren't really done by long distance hikers necessarily. So Potomac Heritage Trail, it's basically the CNO Canal Path, and you go on the Great Allegheny Passage, and then there's like about 70 miles of actual trail. Because CNO is a bike path, an old rail trail, the Allegheny is a rail trail, and is really not aimed at long distance hikers, is more for, for long distance bikers. Uh, but it was an okay trail. It was kind of fun. It wasn't super long. And, and it was part of that. Now, now I'm part, I'm pursuing that bigger goal. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. So start at a lookout. Go along the canal. Canal is actually on the, the other side, but this was just a really pretty picture. I was there in late fall. I learned some of, of the um, history which so so nature and wilderness wise this wasn't the trail to go do but history it was interesting i learned about the towpath i learned about the canals and and it was fairly pretty there were some nice fall colors there were some tent sites so i wasn't scrambling like on the florida trail to like find an illegal tent site somewhere in, in, in you know somebody's backyard or whatever uh, it was late fall, so I did get some snow in the Laurel Highlands, but I was super excited because I was back on trail in the end, and it really made me appreciate trail. Like, when you're not on trail, it's a different experience for me. Like, when I'm on trail, it, it's it just, you're more part of nature somehow. It, it makes it um, 
I, I enjoy that better. And, and this trail really drove that home to me. Like for, for most of it, I was not on actual hiking trail, single track. And then when I hit trail, I was so super excited. So that one done, now I'm, 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 I'm hitting the big one, the North Country Trail. So I wrote down 4,800 miles, who knows, 47, I don't know. Um, it was, it's a long ways. It's a long ways. It took me just under 300 days. I, I took two longer breaks because I had some personal issues with getting new teeth and stuff. Um, normal stuff during a through hike, right? Um, so I started in Ohio, which I was, the herd was the more challenging state of that trail. And, and it was challenging. I actually did enjoy the canal path towpath section because again it had some history and uh and i thought i would like the other end the southern end where because it was more hilly and it would be a little bit more trail but it was actually very challenging for me i was by myself all the time it got very lonely uh it got hot real early uh, there was a lot of aggressive dogs that were you know uh, guarding the farms and um it was it was challenging and it really that trail drove home to me that uh even though i'm an introvert we do need some company every once in a while you need some uh some social interactions uh so that was an interesting lesson that i learned from that trail is that yes i like being by myself but i do need people where we are social beings so that was it was an interesting lesson uh and even though like again a lot of road walking but scenery like this where you just you see the stormy clouds and and all of that um is is beautiful to me uh and some sections were really nice trails. Superior Hiking Trail in Minnesota was gorgeous. Border Route was gorgeous. Uh, I got to, because we were so, I mean, because I did take so long that I did not beat winter. Uh, I had my partner come out and hike the winter section with me in Michigan. And we got to hike uh, pictured rocks in the, um, in the winter time. And the, the beach was kind of frozen sometimes. And it was just, we had amazing sunsets and sunrises. Uh, so sometimes being in off season uh, has its perks, but it did make it very challenging to finish especially towards the end it just got really cold we had an amazing network of trail angels that helped us out uh and we could dry out our gear and and with dry gear we were able to go with a lot lower temperatures like we were able to hike in minus 10 with the gear we had because of being able to dry out my gear when i did that winter section of the AT. If it got like below zero, I was in trouble because my boots were just not dried out and then my feet would get too wet. And uh, so so thankfully, um, the trail angels in Michigan were, were amazing and uh, and helped us through through that end. The the North Country Trail really was a team effort uh, with people coming out, supporting me uh hiking with me staying in touch with me through social media messages phone calls um i could not have done that trail without support uh so finally that long one's done and now i only have two left uh but i'm really tired and i'm starting to get a little burned out but i want to get them all done because there there is this other woman who is also hiking all of them and you know i want to kind of beat her so uh, <laughs> so i take about a month off after the north country trail and then i'm back on track i'm doing the natchez trace which i don't really know why the natchez trace is a national scenic trail uh because there's five sections that are designated National Scenic Trail, but they're really not well maintained at all. And you can't even hike all of them really because they're so overgrown. And then there's like poison ivy everywhere. And, and there's really no backpacking, camping. It's really not a trail, it's a parkway. But uh, you kind of just do it at this point because it's part of the goal. Uh, and um, I was glad that one was over because really it was mostly road walking with no shoulder and lots of traffic. 
this was a part of the trail. I am, again, this was another one with like, I was very lucky. I had support. Um, this is troll. He had his truck and he just uh, helped me. So I didn't even have to really carry a whole lot of stuff. So I got pretty lucky on that one. He was just like, I'm going to help you. I was like, all right, awesome. Thank you. Um, but this is a part of the sunken tree. So historically, it's an interesting trail, but really not a trail. I would just drive it, do some sightseeing, hike a little bit of the sunken trace and do a lot of little side trail and experience that way and you'll have a better time. Uh, it was spring, so there was, you know, beautiful little flowers on the side of the road. So I, I tried to focus on that. And then the last one, is, I, I go immediately from the Natchez Trace to the Ice Age. Now, now we're going to get it done. And uh, Ice Age Trail, I picked up a friend uh, and um, she hiked with me the first, um, a third, I think. And then in the end, I had um, Greenleaf hike with me. So in the middle, I had some of my, my private time just to kind of go through like my head, like, oh, what is this? What did, what did I am doing? What, what did I just accomplish? What am I, what is this? Why, okay, 11 National Scenic Trails, that's cool. Uh, so um, it's in Wisconsin. And it really highlights, you know, the potholes and, and the glacier erratic, glacial erratics. And uh, this hike kind of taught me how privileged I have been with a lot of the trails where there is so much like uh, scenery, mountains and all of that. And, and I was kind of like, well, well these, these glacial erratics or whatever, they're just rocks like that. I've seen many of these glacial erratics in the White Mountains. And, but then you hike a trail like that and you're like, but well, that's what they have here. And I should appreciate that as, and, and not be like so blase about it. Like it's, it's amazing there, these nature, these features are here and people have constructed a trail and, and they get to enjoy it. And, and so it kind of made me realize how lucky I have been in, in a lot of this, the ways where, where I live that I can just go out and, and hike these mountains. And, and so, so appreciate what, what you have and what you can hike. Uh, Ice Age Trail was challenging as well in the fact that half of it, about half of it was road walking. They're working really hard on getting it off the road. Uh, but uh, luckily I know what to wear for footwear now for road walking. So that wasn't a problem, but it is challenging again with, uh, camping and and all of that so sometimes I ended up doing like a 30 mile day just to get to the next tent site and just kind of like ha base your your daily distances on that um but even though maybe you would say like it's not the most like amazing like scenic with mountains what you do get again like there's always cool skies and storms and, and, and just the light and um, you just look for different things to uh, appreciate and it makes you like, like with the Natchez trees, like I said, with the flowers, it's like you just look at the little things like what is there that I can enjoy instead of like, oh my God, I hate this roadblock and you're like, well, what is there that I can enjoy? And for the Natchez, it was the flowers. Uh, I say just, you know, like cool stormy skies and, and company that I was lucky to have. And, and like beaver dams are part of the trail. Like that's different. It's a little tricky to navigate, but it's different. So you just appreciate what you have. You look for the different things that make it special. And, and that goes for, for all of the trails. Like when you have a day that you're not enjoying yourself, it's like, well, either just maybe take a, take a break. Or for me, it's like, slow down. And instead of being so focused on making miles or, or getting to the next point or, or just slow down and look around and, and kind of take the time to appreciate what's right in front of you. And, um, and that usually works for me. Like, I'll just take a, take a break and be more aware, more mindful of, of how lucky I am to just be out there, even though maybe that day I'm not having a good day. Uh, I am lucky to be out there. Uh, this probably was one of those days where you're like, hmm, this is not really a lot of fun. I'm definitely not going to take a break because uh, it was mosquito hell on the Ice Age Trail. 
um, covered. I bought some really ugly leggings at Walmart because I didn't have long leggings to cover my legs and the mosquitoes were just terrible. So this one, even though it was miserable, I was definitely not going to slow down. I was running. <laughs> uh, what was cool about the Ice Age Trail otherwise is there were some areas with prairies that they tried to restore and, and have wildflowers, which was really neat as well. And there was beach walks. So this is along Lake Michigan, which is interesting because the North Country Trail, I had been on the other side of Lake Michigan in wintertime and now we're like in summer and it's wonderful and we can go, you know, swimming and enjoy it. And um, that was really neat. Um, and so yeah then then i finished it and um it was really weird people said wow do you feel like you've like accomplished this big goal and i'm like yeah uh but i it hadn't quite sunk in yet and it, and it's still like I, there's still many more hikes that i want to do it didn't feel like this big ending or anything it was just like some hikes that I'd wanted to do and and uh, and now I can focus on the hikes that I want to do and maybe not have as much road walking. I was a little burned out, but I'm past the burnout and I'm already looking at new adventures and new things and um, uh, because for me going out and hike is is returning to myself self like I'm out there I don't have to really I can take a break of, of of getting lost in what society thinks I should be doing I'm learning I'm still learning uh and um I'm not as preoccupied at, at like pleasing other people maybe uh, I feel strong. I love the discovery I love the exploration I love seeing new places um and uh sometimes people are like well has it changed you and and i'm like or how has it changed I'm like it hasn't changed me it actually allowed me time and space to come back to myself and i feel at home in in nature and on the long distance trails and um it's just this ideal combination of, of a routine, but seeing new things every day. And, um, and I love it. And, um, and it also one of the things that I, I like to kind of highlight because I know there's, there's people that struggle sometimes with feeling good enough or being like, oh, can't, but I can't do that. Or, or, oh, I'm too big or I'm too old or I can't, I can't do any of that. And I'm like, yeah, you, you, you can, but, you know, make it, um, make it. So if you want to go out, make it so that it's, uh, don't set your goals too high at first, just make it, make it a goal that you can attain and then work on that. And, um, and, and for me, the biggest lesson that I've gotten out of the hiking is that um, my body is amazing. Like I, I had this thing, I mean, and a lot of us have this where it's like, oh my God, I'm not, I'm not, I don't look like, I don't look like the people that are in the magazines and the ads and, and I, I don't look like the, the long distance hiker. And it doesn't matter as long as your body is strong enough and fit enough to to go out um that's all you need so so i i've i've written this little thing one time and that kind of resonated with people so i want to i want to read it um it's like if there's one thing that hiking has taught me it's that my body is amazing like i have bones i have muscles and fat and the bones are strong and the muscles are big and the fat comes and goes and sometimes it stays forever like my arms <laughs> uh it's like it it my body can take me to all the places i want to go and it can scramble up the rocks and the white mountains in new hampshire you can walk through the desert in california you can walk through the winter in michigan and my body helps my dreams become reality and it, it houses my mind my energy my determination and 
And I won't deny myself of, of ice cream or pie just so I can fit somebody else's image of what I should look like. It, it, it gets me where I want to go and, and I love it for it. So, so that really has been very important to me um, for self-confidence. Um, uh, and yeah, I kind of wanted to end on that and see if there's any, any questions um, about about the hike. <laughs> so Arlette, wonderful job uh, as expected. I know this was your first virtual presentation. You did great. And sorry, I did end up hiding my uh, screen. Uh, some some people were able to see me, so I didn't want to be oh. a distraction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't take it personally. I was, I was here listening. Uh, so Teresa says, wow, amazing presentation. Heidi says, this was awesome and so inspiring. Uh, Stacy says, brava, well done, loved your presentation. Nancy says, thank you for bringing me back to so many wonderful memories of places where my husband and I hiked many years ago. Uh, this was a, a wonderful presentation. Uh, Dory says, this was so inspiring. Darlene says, you are amazing. Thank you for sharing your journey. <laughs> Francis says, thank you. Excellent presentation. I really enjoyed it. Gail says, you are an inspiration. Donnie says, wonderful presentation. Congratulations on an amazing accomplishment. Very impressive. All right, let's get to some questions here. So Donnie asks, how did you generally plan your daily provisions of food and water? And how did you find out about nightly campsites or places to stay along the trails? So food and water, uh, on the PCT, there were water reports and data books and stuff. Um, nowadays, I'm sure there's there's like a, a, a smartphone app that's called, it used to be Gut Hook and now it's far out. Um, there are usually a lot of information on, on water sources, uh, but I, for the PCT and CDT, well, CDT was just looking at the map, where is there a blue line and hoping that the blue line or the blue little pond would actually be a blue line and have water. Uh, PCT, there was a water report for the desert and there were some water caches, but you can't always count on a water cache either. So I would carry, I kind of figured out four or five liters of water per 20 miles. And sometimes I had to carry that much and five liters is a lot. Um, so I've gotten a little bit more efficient uh, now knowing my body what it needs. Um, but that is like, yeah, just looking at your at your data and inf your information is where is the next water source and I can carry about 20 miles. If it's 30 miles, that's gonna be really, really tricky. And usually there was some water caches um, that would help hikers if it's over 20. Um, and uh, provisions, uh, I kind of, with the shorter hikes, uh, just with short overnights, is try to figure out how much do I eat? And I know there's people that are looking at the calories and there's like these lists that's, this is how much calories, how many calories you burn. And I don't know, like, I think for guys might, that might work for me, that doesn't always, it's, I don't burn as much, um, as, as you can tell on the ice age trail, people are like, Oh my God, how can she still be so chubby? Uh, cause it was flat hiking. I wasn't burning that much, but I was eating like I was burning like in the high mountains where I do burn more calories. So it all, it's, that's a personal thing. Uh, I don't look at the calories. I look at when am I hungry? And, uh, in winter time I go by like, I have a breakfast cookie. I have two or three bars and then I have lunch and then I have another bar and, um, and then I have dinner. So I go by, um, and then you, when you go to the supermarket, you try to find whatever is, is available and you look for kind of more calorie dense uh, uh, bars. Like, you know, you get a wafer or whatever that might have some calories, but it might not really tide you over very much. So, so that was more like experience is like, this is when I get hungry and this is how much I eat. Um, I don't really have a lot of, uh, good planning for that, but that it's, that was more like, I go out, this is how hungry I am. This is what I like to eat. I try to, I used to eat a lot more candy. And now that there's like more healthier bars, I do try to get the more healthier bars, but I will have maybe one baggie of candy because that is something that appeals. 
it's fun to eat and it's a little reward like oh i'm tired and i'm hiking really hard and maybe this trail's not that fun but hey i can have a couple of m m's to make me feel better um <laughs> But uh, yeah, I do, I do try to balance a little bit better and, and you know, put some tuna in so that I have protein, uh, not just sugar. Um, in the desert, it's good to carry a bag of potato chips because you are sweating a lot and you're getting rid of a lot of the salt. So then having potato chips is actually a good thing. Uh, I also carry like uh, electrolyte tablets, which is something I learned that wasn't really out so much when I first started. Um, yeah, so try and, trial and error for shorter trips and then apply that to the longer trips. And then Arlette, uh, the second part of the question was, how did you find out about nightly campsites or places to stay along the trails? Uh, so nowadays, again, that far out app, but uh, some of the urban trails, uh, Google Maps and then look at satellite images and, and try to find a place. <laughs> um, that's, it's an advanced skill. <laughs> <laughs> try to find a place that doesn't have a lot of houses around that has a lot of trees and and preferably is on public land and um and hope you find something in the woods uh on the Appalachian Trail it's very established you know there's a lot of tent sites you can look at the app you can look at the data books that it will be it will be in there um but yeah the let the more remote trails it's kind of like yeah um look at look at a map look at look at your now with yeah with google um sometimes you just go at this is how many miles i want to hike per day is there anything in that range of the whatever 20 miles that might have a site uh but a, the more established trails have a lot more info on that uh on those now and and uh so that makes it a lot easier but yeah some of the some of the urban trails that was very challenging sometimes churches would let you camp in the backyard i never took them up on that but i did end up at a bible camp one time on north in in north dakota <laughs> so yeah and sometimes you just fluke and you don't do a good planning and you end up kind of sleeping in a ditch on the side of the trail it's not the best planning but yeah so uh, it depends on the says... trail yeah, Jean says it was great to meet you, Arlette, on your trek through the UP on the North, uh, North Country Trail. I had uh, no idea how big your goals were uh, at the time. Um, uh, this, present today, this presentation today put it all in perspective. Uh, see you out on the trail, uh, Jean and Michael in Marquette. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, your, fa your fan club is here, Arlette. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we have a lot of questions about footwear, Arlette. Uh, so, uh, what kind of, uh, shoes and boot, boots and what kind of footwear did you, uh, did you use? So when I first started backpacking, I was wearing boots, like a lot of other people were, especially in Europe In Europe, still a lot of people wear boots. Uh, then I figured out for the desert, I wanted something lighter. Uh, so I switched to trail runners. Uh, I would... For a long time, I had New Balance shoes, and then they started to kind of crap out. Uh, but um, trail runners, with my feet, since they're kind of wide and high volume, I end up with the Lone Peaks. Uh, if I can, for road walking, I'll wear sandals, like either Teva or Keen, because uh, they're just comfortable and um, gives me more um, freedom for my toes. Um, and then, you know, obviously for the winter time, I will have, uh, some more insulated footwear, a little bit warmer, a little bit more waterproof, but most of the time it's some type of trail runner. Um, I did get plantar fasciitis on the North country trail. So very late in the game, I never had any foot issues except for that Florida trail section. And, um, uh, I had to, I had to kind of switch to a sturdier, sturdier shoe to help support my foot. But now I'm trying to get back into the trail runners, because uh, trail runners, what they say, like you know, you uh, with a boy, a boot, you that's every time, every footstep, you every time you lift your feet, you lift that boot, which is heavier, and uh, a trail runner is lighter, um, so it's it's not as much effort to lift your foot, um, but they do wear out a little quicker, um, uh, but they have they're a little bit softer, so from the harder trails, it's a little bit better um, for me. 
Uh, boots, sometimes people still like them for the AT or for the rocky sections of the, the whites. And if that is something that people like and, and they're comfortable with, I, I'm not going to say like, oh, you should change that. Uh, but I, I, I don't wear boots unless it's winter. They're just stiff and heavy. Um, so Arlette, a lot of questions about, um, uh, you, you can go in any direction you want with, with this answer, but a lot of people asking, you know, did you have any close calls with animals? Did you encounter any dangerous weather? Were you ever afraid of someone hurting you? What was your scariest experience while hiking? So, so this is a, a possibly a little unexpected answer, but it's the aggressive dogs in Ohio. That was my most scary uh wildlife <laughs> encounter because <laughs> um it would be packs of dogs and and there was nobody to call them back and luckily i had bought early on there was a, a dog that startled me and i'd had some pepper spray uh but i realized that it was it, i wasn't fast enough with it and so somebody said that there's this dazer thing that you can press a button and then it, it you know has this like really high pitched tone and it will get the dogs out of their aggressive mind and i've actually used that a lot um otherwise actual wildlife i have seen grizzlies um but not much and i i am i have a healthy fear of grizzlies on the pacific northwest trail when I went out of Glacier, um, there were a lot of people that were talking to me and they're like, oh, but the Grizzlies, the Grizzlies, you'd be really scared. You shouldn't be out there by yourself. And, and I got scared because of they were so scared. And, and, and I, like I said, I have a healthy fear, but I wasn't scared, scared. I was still going to hike my hike. But then with them talking to me about it, I kind of like had to, I got freaked out because of their fear. They were projecting their fear onto me. And I had to really work through that a little bit where, where I'm like, wait a minute, am I as scared as they are? Is this their problem or is this my problem? And, um, and that night I was camped and I'm like, I can't, I, if I want to keep hiking this trail, I can't be that scared. So I either have to quit this trail or I have to just be realistic about it and be like well what are the chances that a grizzly bear is gonna find me in this like random spot not an established tent site uh I didn't cook at my tent site so they wouldn't have smelled any of my food uh it's like what are the chances that they're gonna randomly find me here and I'm like well they're not very big chances so I should be okay um, so once I've decided that, and I wasn't going to let fear, you know, um, get to me, I just kept going and I never saw another grizzly. I saw a couple of black bears and they're usually, as soon as they saw me, they would run away. Um, so, so no, um, um, I haven't had any close calls or anything. You know, there was the random like rattlesnake that freaked me out, you know, all of that stuff, <laughs> but um no once once and that was a lesson to learn is like don't let other people's fears keep you from doing what you want to do just because they're scared it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to be scared so arlette um we uh, are in overtime at the moment are you okay going another five to ten minutes yeah i'm fine yeah we we did have over 40 questions we're not going to get to them all but we'll see <laughs> we'll make a dent here yeah um so Francis wants to know, uh, well, actually a couple of questions I'll combine here. Uh, yeah. One, uh, who determines what a national scenic trail is? How does that work? And then uh, is it possible that any new national scenic trails will be designated or added soon? So I think it's the organizations or the, the people that are involved in the trail that send a petition, I think, to the government and then they designate the trail. Uh, so sometimes like, like the Potomac Heritage Trail, I don't think there's a really a, a big, like there's not a hiking uh, association or anything that I know of and same with the Natchez. So those trails, I don't really understand. I know the Ice Age Trail, they, they probably petition same with the Arizona Trail, I think. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's a government designation. And then I think they get some funding. Mm -hmm. um, so there was that. And what was the rest of the question? Uh, well, I, I think what she was getting at is oh, what if, if another trail is added, are you going to have to hike it? Um, so I think the Benton Mackay Trail is one that's trying to get the designation. I've already hiked it. 
Uh, and I heard rumors about the American Discovery Trail, but I'm like, yeah, that just doesn't sound like a good idea. It's, <laughs> I don't want to hike that one. That's so much road walking. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, there's certain 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 things like it has to have a special scenic worth or something. I, mm -hmm. I don't know too much about it, but some of them yeah. I question. Some of them I, I think that just trace should just be not have that designation. Uh, we have a few folks ask about finances. Uh, Teresa wants to know how do you uh, finance uh, your uh, hikes? And uh, Trish says, a uh, great presentation. For those who want to hike all the trails, what is an all around budget for through hiking? Would $2,000 a month do it? $2,000 a month, that should do it, yeah. That seems like a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, for me, it's the currently, I mean, like a lot of people that are trying to do this, uh, they have seasonal jobs. Uh, I've been combining lately, the last couple of years, guiding and I make dolls. So that's two businesses that are, are uh, flexible. So I can take mm -hmm. some time. And I've also been lucky that I've had some support from, from partners and, and friends. Uh, especially the last, you know, years where I was basically hiking for two years straight. Uh, but yeah, a lot of the times it's seasonal jobs. So you have to give up some things and you have to be frugal um, to, to make that work. Uh, like if you want the, the big house and the cars and the TVs and the big family, then that's not, it, that's going to be a problem. You kind of have to make some choices on what is, what is your priority? What is it that you want? Um, so yeah so there's that for me currently it's it's guiding and and I, I get you know some some presentations now that I get a little bit of money for that helps you know with buying a new pair of shoes or you know stuff like that but uh yeah just don't you, you can't be wasteful with your money you really got to prioritize what you're putting in towards and then tr through hiking doesn't have to be that expensive once you have the gear and a shout out to Gossamer Gear who has actually provided me with backpacks and tents and stuff uh then your your cost is just your food which is what you're going to do anyways like when you're living you have to buy food so that's not an added cost um the, the added cost is that you can't work at that time and 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 maybe motel stays so if you don't if you're on a low budget don't stay in the motels stay in a hostel or plan it so that you camp before town you go into town get your food you resupply and then go out of town without staying in a motel that will save you so there are ways to go really on a shoestring budget might not be as much fun because that night in the motel is really nice you know, like blasting the AC when you have a really hot day is really nice, or a hot bath when you're in winter is really nice. Um, but those are things that you can kind of, and you don't have to get your designer Patagonia jacket. You can go to a thrift shop and get, you know, there's decent gear at, at thrift shops. You know, you can get a, a sundress for a couple dollars, you know. Uh, socks and shoes, that's a harder one. That's always going to cost you some money. And, and, you know, the backpack might wear out, but those, you know, that lasts several years. So real socks and shoes is where for gear is the most cost that keeps me trying. But otherwise you can kind of go cheap if you need to. So folks, we're going to start to wind down here. Uh, a lot of questions are led about um, what's next for you. So um, what will be your next adventure? What is next for you? You're an inspiration. Is there a book or a movie in the works? <laughs> um, have you ever, uh, let me see here, let me skip some of these. So but yeah, basically what's next for you, Arlette? You taking a break? You deserve a break. Uh, well, I took a little bit of a break and I, I, I got back to doing some work and selling some dolls and doing some more guiding. And I, I was a little burned out, but but currently I've been watching lots of videos about the Jump Near Trail and then the Sierra, and then, and then like I started the Sierra higher out one time and didn't finish it because I wasn't in good enough shape and um, and I wasn't as good with navigation. So so now I'm like, oh, the Sierra higher up, maybe I should do that one or try that one again. And, and I'm gonna uh, re-hike the Arizona trail this spring. Oh, uh, just something nice and scenic with not a lot of road walking. Uh, but yeah, I've been looking and then there's friends that talk about there's these long hikes in Europe. And I was like, that sounds interesting. Um, so there's 
there is so much um, still out there to do or to repeat, like some of repeat some of my mm -hmm. favorites. Um, mm -hmm. But there's still a lot, a lot out there, and I just love being outside and living outside. So, by the way, Richard asks, did the other woman who uh, you became aware of, who was working to complete the eleven trails, um, did she complete them? Do you know? She did. And, ha and yes. have you ha have you ever met her? No. <laughs> We've been in contact. We've been like exchanging information because on the North Country Trail, I was right. At, I was just ahead of her. So I would give her information. And uh, uh, she was ahead of me on the Ice Age Trail. And so she, you know, so she finished this fall. Yeah. Yeah. So she's okay. the seventh person to finish. So oh. it's pretty neat. Yeah. Well, and by the way, we didn't really get the answer. So do you plan on writing a book or, or of some sort or what, what do you think there? I don't know. Because um, you journaled, I know, uh, you know, you journal about this, you have, you made, you know, yeah. you kind of, so you, you kind of have something already, uh, maybe you could turn it into something. Yeah, the whole thing is time, right? There's time mm -hmm. for, I'm like, I sit down with my calendar, and there's like, all right, right I want to do this hike, I want to do that hike, I want to have my niece and nephew come visit, I want to work, I have to work. And so, so where is the time for me to sit down and actually like edit these journals into a book? And then what is it going to be about? Is it going to be mm -hmm. about one specific hike? Is it going to be about all 11, about my experience? Right. I don't know. I don't know what people want to read. And um, I don't know if I'm a good enough writer. I don't know if there's an audience. Uh, I guess there would be an audience. But <laughs> Have you read the, uh, the book Wild by Cheryl Strait? Have you read that one? Yeah, so she's a good writer, and she didn't even finish the trail. I might not be a good, as good of a writer. I like um, Anisha's Heather Anderson's books because mm -hmm. she's a she's a, a, a through hiker, and she's done all these trails, and and she's a good writer. So it's a good combo of both. Sometimes mm -hmm. you get the ones that is just like the, I got up and I ate and then I hiked and then I went to bed. I don't want to have that kind of book. So yeah. um, I don't know. It's uh, I've been thinking about it, but it's a lot of time and effort. I don't really. There's so much to do. In life. All right, Arlette, <laughs> uh, we're, we're in the uh, lightning round here. Uh, quick questions, quick answers. A lot of folks asked about nicknames. So um, do, do most people who hike have nicknames? Did you come up with apple pie? Uh, what's the what's the origin of that story if you didn't talk about it? Uh, so it's, it's, it, it can be something that's like specific to that person that make them stand out. You know, there's funny stories. Uh, my friend likes this, this guy, his name is Flavor Packet because he thought that the little uh, um, packets in the, in the dehydrated meals that are there to prevent from mold were flavor packets. And so he put them in his food and he's like, well, my food hasn't been tasting very good. So, so, so that was a funny, a funny thing about him that he made a mistake and now his trail name is Flavor Packet. Um, so they're like, really, there's sometimes there are good stories. And for me, it was just kind of like, uh, um, I, I kind of did coin it myself and I thought it was kind of silly, but then like, you know, I, it was out there and, and, I, and I, I kept it. Um, so it might have something to do with a process that you're in. It might have something to do with a funny, silly, event that happened or you know it, it can be all kinds of stuff um and you don't have to keep it if you don't like it sometimes people give it to you sometimes you can name yourself it does it, there's no rules really so our uh, last question from teresa um where so this is a good plug for you uh where can we purchase your dolls arlette you referenced that um uh, what if, where, where can we buy your dolls so uh, I, my website's terrible and I don't know if the link works, <laughs> but my website is arlatlan.com. The best way to see what I make is, uh, on my Instagram, which is arlatlan fiber creations. And, uh, there is also a link, uh, on my Instagram, there's a link to my shop. So that's okay. the best way to go is on Instagram. And there's a page on my Facebook too. That's Arlette Lawn Dolls and Photography, I think. If, if they Google it, they'll find it, yeah. Yeah, so Ar yeah. Ar Ar Arlette, uh, so folks, <clears throat> let's give Arlette a big virtual round of applause <laughs> for uh, being so generous with her time and sharing her incredible, amazing, inspirational story with us. Um, Arlette, uh, I will uh, send you an email later today with the recording. Uh, folks, I'll send you an email later today with a feedback survey uh, with this recording. 
and with information about some other upcoming uh, virtual travel presentations that I think you're going to enjoy. Arlette, any last words before we wrap it up here? No, just, you know, if you want to go out, have fun and 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 then take your time and um, for a successful through hike, just pace yourself and don't get injured. <laughs> Good advice. Don't get injured. So thank you all so much. Sorry we didn't get to all the comments and questions, but we got we got to most of them. Uh, so thank you all, and I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day. Thanks again, Arlette. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>